getting subliminal messages and subliminal hypnosis recordings today. Um, do they work? Is there any evidence to support this stuff? But it's a video I've been wanting to record for a while um, because I get asked about it a lot. Um, I mean, I've discussed this, this subject in my Facebook group with fellow professionals on our hubs, and I thought I'd relay some of those discussions and some of the evidence base here on my YouTube channel. Um, um, one of the problems that us professionals, uh, hypnosis professionals face is, is that kind of popular perception um, that often associates hypnosis with subliminal messaging. And also lots of hypnosis professionals and hypnotherapists sell subliminal recordings or they promote ideas of subliminal messaging. And as with so much popular psychology, the field of hypnosis and hypnotherapy is rife with, with misinformation and falsehoods, um, despite us having you know, a lot of brilliant evidence and research to draw upon to support uh, uh, this field, you know, though that, that, that actually requires reading books and journals. There are many who insist upon perpetuating a lot of nonsense instead, nonsense that seems to get forged forever in, in everyday culture and certainly seems to whirl around the hypnosis field. So with reference to today's video title, um, um, the short answer is no. Um, no, there's, there's no evidence to prove that subliminal messages or subliminal recordings actually work. Um, and that would probably make for a rather unsatisfactory ending to this video. So let me tell you why I say that. Um, the kind of Bible for advocates of subliminal advertising is a book written in 1974 by Wilson Brian Key, um, and it's called Subliminal Seduction. And it's a very successful book, I mean successful sales-wise, led many to believe that the advertising industry was subliminally influencing the public. Um, but what about the evidence to support the book's findings? You know, um, um, in the 1950s, a market research consultant called James Vickery installed a special projector inside a New Jersey cinema. And for a period of six weeks, he flashed certain marketing messages onto the screen for less than three one hundredths of a second. Um, not enough time for people to consciously recognize or register the message. And this happened continually throughout the entire film being shown. The subliminal messages said, drink Coca-Cola and eat popcorn. And Vickery showed that during the films that he'd flashed subliminal messages onto the screen, sales of Coca-Cola rose by an average of 18% and sales of popcorn rose by 58%. And it got lots of press. Um, the media sensationalized it. Um, um, it got discussed in psychology classes, for example. So there's our evidence. Why are you disputing subliminal messaging, Adam? Uh, you may be thinking. Well, Vickery was asked to replicate his research in controlled conditions by hardcore assessment um, um, under controlled conditions. There were absolutely no sales increases at all. When he was then asked to comment upon this, Vickery came clean and confessed that he'd falsified the results from his original study. Furthermore, in a 1962 interview with Advertising Age, Vickery explained that he'd never conducted the original New Jersey experiment at all. It was all made up, you know, ridiculous, that the damage had been done by then though. And today, people still believe in subliminal messaging. Um, one of my favourite films ever um, perpetuates this myth. Uh, Brad Pitt plays a character called Tyler Durden in the film Fight Club. And he explains that when he was working as a film projectionist, he would intentionally add fleeting pictures of male phalluses into films. And although the images were imperceptible to the cinema goer, the film pans around and focuses on a couple getting hot and steamy while watching his edited film, implying that the subliminal messages were influencing them in their sex drives. And as it happens, the film also contains some flashing images of Tyler Durden during the film, which the director states are illustrating the main character's transformation into him. Him. You can watch some of those video clips um, um, on YouTube, um, that, you know, they're, they're, they're good fun. Any potentially positive research findings related to subliminal messages in other studies tend to have the results attributed to 
um, placebo and expectation. And the same can be said of those people who state that they've derived some benefit from listening to subliminal recordings. Um, as a hypnotherapist, it would probably be remiss of me not to mention one very powerful additional explanation, and that is suggestion. If I create an audio program stating that it uses subliminal messages to help you lose weight, you're most likely to report that it helped you lose some weight, um, rather than you know if, if you had no idea what it was supposed to be for. Um, um, that, 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 that you know you're unlikely to say, well, it didn't affect my weight, but I found myself stopping smoking, for example. You know, very unlikely that you'd say that. Um, the suggestion given with the title and with the aim of the track, accompanied by certain believable pseudoscience, placebo effect and expectancy created, you know, we all know the power of expectancy, it all kind of potentially combines to deliver the outcome suggested. I wonder, you know, if, if I gave that audio program designed to help someone lose weight that had subliminal messages on it to create that effect, but I did not tell anyone what it was for. I just asked them to report their findings. How many do you think would be able to know what the track was aimed at doing? Or how many do you think would report that they had lost weight? Alleged subliminal audios are thought to work by, by playing messages so audibly low that a person cannot consciously perceive it. And subliminal means, you know, below the threshold of conscious perception. So for any such message to be truly subliminal, it must not be consciously detectable. So the bottom line is, though, as far as science is concerned, that if it's not consciously detectable, it is not influencing or affecting you in any beneficial way. Um, if you're going to have to choose between subliminal recordings and using your own affirmations, for example, use affirmations. Even better, you know, learn Emil Kuei's methods of making affirmations and auto-suggestions even more effective. Or learn evidence-based self-hypnosis that features in my own published research and books, you know, to really take that up another level. So, you, you can rest assured, subliminal advertisements and subliminal messages simply do not work. Um, you are safe. Uh, in numerous carefully controlled laboratory trials, subliminal messages did not affect subjects' choices or preferences. And when tested in the real world, subliminal messaging failed. If you look at peer-reviewed credible evidence, subliminal recordings are not supported in the slightest. Not in the slightest. Um, the Skeptoid podcast coverage of subliminal seduction when researching this matter um, found a 2007 study from the University of California, Davis, and stated that the, the findings, surprisingly, were that subliminal sexual images had no effect on men and actually produced lower levels of sexual arousal in women. Neither group went out and bought popcorn or Pepsi. The conclusion suggests that the subliminal sexual priming um, um, actually led to a result that was somewhat aversive, um, which is not really a great advertising strategy. In the 2009 book, 50 Great Myths of Popular Psychology, Shattering Widespread Misconceptions About Human Behavior, um, favorite author of mine, Stephen J. Lynn and their colleagues, dispel the myth of subliminal messages. They cite the 1958 Canadian broadcasting um, experiment whereby the audience was advised that a subliminal advertisement would be tested during a Sunday night television show. The words phone now were flashed upon the screen 352 times throughout the television show. Yet the telephone company records show that there was no increase in phone calls whatsoever. <coughs> As I say, it seems entrenched in popular psychology, and I'm guessing that hypnotherapists of a certain ilk will not stop selling subliminal wares anytime soon. I mean, if, if it was used by, by Vice President Al Gore, as it was back in the year 2000 during his, his advertising campaign, you know, where, where he flashed the word rats on screen uh, when referring to his political opponent, then you know, it's reached some lofty heights of awareness, hasn't it? 
Um, perhaps realising that this is nothing more than a great conspiracy means that we can actually all take our foil hats off now uh, when we're watching the television. Um, um, and I'll put some references in the comments section um, below so you can, you, you can follow up on the things that I've said. Uh, remember, subscribe to the channel, go explore my college website. I send you my very best. <laughs>